back to another week of anime tier list where i judge the most recent episodes and how much i enjoy them in this order peak great good mid dookie let's start off with let's talk about perry i don't know anymore how i feel about this show because of how stupid everyone is and that's part of the jokes but it, it's not as funny as it's annoying at this point the fight against the frog was like honestly i think it was mid the fight against the dragon frog was pretty stupid and yeah the whole joke is like he thinks that it's a frog and not a dragon and he's like somehow parrying the poison he's probably healing himself but i mean in terms of the actual plot progression and the war happening things are heating up it's just last episode was Ines basically just being salty and jealous that Noor is, you know, more in the mind of her stepdad than she is. And she, I don't know. We need to let it cook, but uh, pretty shaky overall. And in, in, even in terms of YouTube performance, I'll show you later in the performance review video that uh, it's it might get dropped if the next episode is not very good, man. Next up, we have... Let's talk about Nokotan. Nokotan, I can safely say that it is back to its former glory in episodes 1 and 2. I genuinely enjoyed the most recent episode of Nokotan. It's all bizarre and wacky again. And my favorite part, honestly, was when they were eating, like, drinking bubble tea together. It was like Nokotan and Koshitan, like, little date episodes, even though Koshitan was, like, stalking Nokotan and seeing what she's doing in her part-time job. Like, that was so cute. It was so funny. The fact that she's scamming and hustling people, just like selling them the deer crackers and having them feed her. <laughs> I love it. I just, I hope that it can continue to do that stuff. Definitely Nogotan was a better episode compared to before. Next up. I honestly don't know how I feel about Nobody Remembers Me. Everything I'm seeing is hype. I see the action. I see pretty good animation. The soundtrack is great, yet I just can't be bothered to give a fuck about the world that they're in. Why? Why is that? Everything about this show screams that it should be like a really exciting show to watch. But for me, I'm like, it just doesn't feel right. Something is missing. Is that just my internal bias against the overall setting of this show? Of it not being like an actual medieval landscape of Isekai? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Maybe it's a little bit too mean to put it in mid. I think I'll put it in good. I'll put it in good. But something about Nobody Remembers Me does not resonate with me. Doesn't mean that the anime is bad per se. It's just that to me when I was watching it, it just felt weird like, huh, I feel like I should be popping off. I should be, I should be excited. But at the same time, I just don't feel like I really give a fuck about the world. I don't know why that is. Next up, we have... The days of my stepsister. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just it's good. Again, days of my stepsister. I don't think I'm the target audience. What fucking happened? We watched the fucking movie within the anime, bro. We watched the movie in the anime, <laughs> and the depiction of the story I think was supposed to relate to like you know the senpai. I don't think she's actually had six months out to live. She was just being cheeky with that. It's just I don't know. We're just watching the movie together. Do I give a fuck about the story and the theme that the movie's telling me? No. I'm not gonna sit here and act like paint drying on the wall is the best fucking thing either. And I'm also not gonna sit here and have turbo retards coming in saying I can't appreciate this show because I'm so stupid. No, I think that you are ingenuine. You are so intellectually dishonest. If you think that Days of My Stepsister is like the most peak thing that you've ever seen. Maybe if you value the themes that the show is telling you. But if you're going to tell me, was I excited? Was I having fun watching this shit? Sometimes I feel like I'm watching paint dry. I'm sorry. This is how I genuinely feel. It's supposed to be a slow burn drama, but like, I don't give a fuck. Genuinely, this is how I feel about it. And if you're mad about that, go fuck yourself. Next up. Let's, let's find another anime to get mad at. Elusive Samurai. I think the Elusive Samurai is mid, bro. And I think the viewership also is pretty accurate in how mid it is. First two episodes got us good, man. First two episodes got us good with an amazing hook. 
But now it's just stalling. I don't give a fuck about this new character. I don't care. They're stalling way too much with the eyeball guy. Just fucking end it already. Like, what are you doing? He's still around? Like, the competition ending, that CGI fight, I don't really care about the CGI fight. I guess it was kind of cool how he, you know, shot behind and covered a blind spot. But, like, compared to episode 1 and 2, I'm not feeling it. And I don't think so are the people. Like, these two shows are probably on the cups of getting dropped if the next episode does bad. Like, Last Samurai, honestly, this already is consecutive episodes dudge right now. Like, straight up. Not even talking about how good the anime is. Just in, topic, and just in terms of, like, my audience's interest. Like, it's not there, man. And I can see why. What other anime should we shit on right now? Oh yeah, Failure Frame. Failure Frame. Should we put this shit in Dookie, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, bro. Like, ugh. What happened? Uh, the elf girl got uh, scammed. We're hiring her as a merchant. CGI battles, and now we saved her and we're going into somewhere we're journeying. I... I don't know if it's Dookie. I think it's just mid. There were some interesting animations they were trying to do. But again, if you have shit animation, I don't care if you're going to tell me, wow, the CGS has so many opportunities to do creative things. I don't give a fuck. You see that garbage, I'm going to call it garbage. It was kind of interesting to see the different ways of things were being like fast forwarded using CGI. There, I remember a distinctive moment when it was through the perspective of someone like rushing in. That was kind of cool. I think it was the elf girl fighting. But like other than that, the story so far... The goddess is interesting. The goddess is pretty interesting. And I do enjoy how she's being so passive aggressive and there's a competition between her and the, you know, the rom-com girl that she like, you know, donutted in episode one. But other than that, Toka and the elf girl story right now, it's not the most compelling. And like, it really doesn't help with the shitty CGI. The more the story lacks, the more I am more like criticizing the CGI. I don't care if the CGI is better if the story is good, but so far the storytelling is pretty mediocre. I'm still waiting for it to get good, but you know, we'll wait. We'll wait. I probably enjoyed it more than Perry. Perry was fucking stupid this week, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Like Perry was genuinely fucking stupid, but that's the whole point of the show. Just being stupid and nor just being dumb. It's just, again, it's just more annoying than funny at this point. Next up. We got some fucking peaks here now, huh? Let's talk about Tensura. What was the most recent Tensura episode? Masayuki. Peak. Yep. Peak, 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 peak. Masayuki is the archetype of anime characters that I absolutely adore. The characters that are more like joke characters that kind of get bailed out due to their luck or charisma or stuff like that, right? His unique skill, chosen one. The fact that whatever he does, he just becomes a hero is so funny. Everybody misunderstanding the situation and him being praised as a god. It's so fucking good. I love Masayuki better than I anticipated. I'm glad that he's not a serious character. Maybe he can get serious, but I'm like, what kind of character is Masayuki really going to be? Are they going to treat him to be this giga OP strong character? And like, maybe that'd be fun. But then they're like, psych, nope, subverted my expectations. And we know that this guy is just... Not a complete Joe character, but there's a lot of comedy involved with it. I love it, man. I totally love the King vibes that I'm getting from One Punch Man from Masayuki. Next up! Let's talk about Isekai Shikaku. Genuinely, this shit was peak. Isekai Shikaku, bro? Like... Isekai Shikaku is my favorite Isekai of this season. Well, that's kind of... Well, Tensura is airing. It's definitely way better in Failure Frame, I can tell you that. Isekai Shikaku, man, holy shit. What is his power? Deporting immigrants. Oh my god, man. And like, here's the beautiful thing about this show that I'm starting to realize the more I watch, right? The entire story is based off of the storytelling. How meta is that? He's an author. And he needs to get inspired to write the stories. And he can't get inspired until he meets up fucked up people. That's why whenever messed up things are happening, he gets more motivated. And like the betrayal of the Demon Lord's daughter when he met her in episode 3 or whatever before, bro. You can already tell the kind of like um, depressing shit that's been built up and how hyped he's going to get. So it's like him going traveling, finding other fucked up scenarios and, and getting inspired. But at the same time, after he writes his story, he deports the shitty other worlders, bro. It's so good. It's genuinely such a good format, man. And like, he's so powerful without being powerful. One HP have an ass. 
I mean, he has important side characters. That's, you know, being the meat shields, but his actual isekai, you know, skill was shown. He just deports them ass, bro. It's an amazing isekai. Next up, we got Oshinoko. Oshinoko most recent episode was the prelude to the hype. The prelude to the hype. We saw a bit of Akane being our I'll kill, right? And yes, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of motherfuckers. And here's the funniest part. Here's the funniest part about indirect spoilers of people having this need to correct other people and thinking that this is what this specific moment was from Ruby's perspective. Did you talk to the mangaka? Did you talk to the mangaka and get an ex exact explanation? Do you really think that there is absolutely no incest theme from Ruby and it was purely just off of the anger of how she felt a single uh, pregnancy, single mom pregnancies would be a bad thing? Can you guys tell me of a passage in the manga where Ruby was actually condemning Ai for being a single mom? Can you guys tell me? No, 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 straight up. I actually want to know. Is there a passage, is there an important frame in the anime where Ruby was genuinely upset and triggered in season 1 about Ai being a single mom and wishing that no one else is going to be a single mom? If so, then I take it back. But I still feel like there is some incest themes revol around it, revolving around it. But are you going to tell me that, like, there are... Like, if there is no sync, like, the more I think back to the episode, like, season one, I can't remember when Ruby was genuinely upset and was like, I will never let single, you know, pregnancies happen again. Like, did that happen? Did that actually happen or what? There's 200 motherfuckers of you in here right now. Stop jacking off and fucking answer me in chat, you lazy retards. In season one, she was more upset about the hate comments about I. True. True. Anyone else? Anyone else in here? Am I gonna have to literally start banning people in chat right now? 190 motherfuckers and not a single one of you has anything valuable to share with chat. I think she was mad about 16 year getting pregnant. No, 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 no. But why would they get mad? I'm talking about the relation of the logic between how Ruby would connect that with I's pregnancy and get mad because of that. Tell me. Is there a situation specifically that connects the single mother pregnancy of Hoshino Ai and how she said that I will make sure nothing will ever happen? Because if not, that's your fucking headcanon. So you're telling me it's a bunch of fucking monkeys getting upset that I'm jumping to a conclusion when themselves are fucking assuming this without any basis and expecting other people to feel that way? Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? Bro, that's the worst part. Like, if the if it's straight up from the source material, I will concede. But if that's never happened, that's your fucking fa like fan fiction, and you're using your headcanon and making other people like you're like you're basically saying you understand the story wrong because of my headcanon. You gotta be the dumbest motherfuckers. Holy shit! The amount of retards coming. I thought those are manga readers trying to correct me. For the incest, we don't have any indication of that in the anime. I think that there's been many points where Aqua and Ruby, whenever Aqua was, you know, hanging out with different girls, that Ruby got jealous of it. I think that there's been multiple situations where Ruby implied that she was a little bit jealous or upset. I do, based on season one and season two. I don't know. When I saw that moment of Ruby getting mad, I thought that she was simply being territorial of her big brother. And the last thing I thought about was the single mother pregnancy because that kind of thing was never mentioned in season one. That shit was never mentioned. Not a single point that I ever think that Ruby was actually upset about Hoshino Ai's pregnancy and being shamed of it or something, or even like just even just trying to prevent that from happening for the future. Like I've never seen that. I've never seen that shit. It's just a bunch of fucking monkeys chirping about their fucking head cannon. Like, oh my god. Like, at the very least, you could come with me with actual source materials or an actual opinion from the mangaka saying this is the way that the story's supposed to be. But a bunch of retards coming in here expecting us to think their way because that's their headcanon is the most cringe shit possible, bro. The fact that they think that it's an actual fact rather than an opinion, that shit's so annoying. For that reason, I want to put this shit in Dookie, bro. Just because of the retard fan base. Yep. Just because of the stupid ass fan base, I want to put this shit in Duke tier. But I can't because the episode was actually pretty good. I think it was peak. 
It was a very good episode. I really enjoyed Akane's murderous intent. Well... I think I'll put it in top of great. It was really good, but the pop-off is going to be next episode. Akane and Cat fight, that was pretty funny. Akane showing her desire to kill, but... I think that it was. it's going to be a top of great. Too many- I don't like it when there's too many in peak. If everything is peaked, then nothing is peaked. We need to be more scrutinizing. I think I'm gonna put it in top of grade for now. Next up, what do we have? Uh, let's look at Wistoria. Wistoria? I'll put it in top- uh, in great tier. Who would I like better? Akane or Kana? Both trash girls. I'm talking about the fucking mom, bro. Our manager girl. Akane- Akana, bro? You fucking battling with fucking losers, bro. The mom is where it's at. She's not a mom, though. She's a wife that got divorced, though, right? Is she single now? Oh, that's even better. Anyways, Wistoria, it came back from hiatus, right? It was more of a setup, explaining a whole new set of characters. Top three, and Julius being a fucking asshole. I, that, that episode was triggering to watch. But it sets up such good hype for the tournament arc. I'm very excited for what's to come. I think it can safely go into the great tier. She never got divorced. The husband just disappeared. That's even more suspicious. I thought the husband was, was like in hiding or something because of the trauma. And like, he was never mentioned after that. But he just like disappeared. He just left her. That's interesting. I don't even know who Theon is. Next up. Osan Newbie Adventurer. There was no episode. Wait, 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 wait. This is last week's tier list. This week's tier list, Osan Newbie Adventure, didn't air due to Olympic. Last week was more of setup, right? Last week was setup and talking about, you know, um, the potentials of what's gonna happen with the Dragon Balls, right? I think I'll put it in the top of great. Uh, sorry, on the top of good. Like, what really happened is just the 40-year-old um, man showing up and getting a little bit of training and us getting a lore. Other than that, we did go flex, though. We did go flex, but was it that hype? I think that it's on a different tier compared to these guys. I definitely have more enjoyment than watching these guys. So I'll put it at the bottom of great then. Next up. We have... Alright. Now we got some heavy fucking hitters, man. We got some fucking heavy hitters. Theon is the red hair fire guy in Wistoria? No, it's not. It's Sion with an S. Where are you getting the TH, my man? Tower of God? It was very entertaining. The whole revelation of Blue Turtle's, you know, revenge plot being revealed. I'm like, oh. Dude, when he was cutting apples for her, I'm like, Blue Turtle, not like this. Not you. You're smarter than this. And I'm like, yep. He is way smarter than that. Bro is cooking up the greatest revenge plot, bro. The whole monologue scene. The way that he clutched the fucking sun and the, the night showed up. Like, oh my god, bro. Blue Turtle hype. I love it. We're getting a lot more characters. It's kind of like impressive how so many characters are being added to the roster, even though there's already such a such a rich cast of characters. At this rate, can you really give each character the representation they deserve? Like, there's gonna be such lack of screen time for a lot of people, but still, regardless, Blue Turtles, you know, Revenge Plot. Oh yes. Oh fucking yes, bro. And too many losing heroines, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, too many losing heroines is still so good. Is it peak? Let's think about it for a second. In terms of the... I mean... Yeah, I think it is. I think it is, right? It is genuinely impressive how this rom-com... Every episode is so fucking impactful, dude. In the way that at least I feel. Anna, I still hate her. I will never stop having beef with this imaginary 2D 15-year-old girl. I don't care, bro. I'm still gonna fucking go out to war every week and shit on her because that's what I do. But still, it is so fun. It is just so fun. It's just, when you think that you know about this show, you don't, bro. Komari's subverting expectations multiple times, man. Lemon's looking like she's gonna get cucked again now, actually. Anna, you know, and Nuku, bro got dumped before. Sorry, bro got rejected before he even confessed. But hey, 
Nuku got a friend though, huh? And we'll see where the story goes on from there. And finally, need I say more? I mean, what do I even need to say about Roche today? Every episode is just fucking peak, right? Every episode is just fucking peak. Everybody, and Yuki, like, yeah, Yuki, fucking Yuki just went out. Yuki popped off. It's unfair. It's unfair. No other anime has this level of hype, this level of... What's what's the word? I guess, um... I don't know. The whole, like, communities on YouTube reactions, and not the YouTube reaction, just, like, on Twitter, just online. Roche, people have crowned Roche Daddy as their show of this season. Nothing can compete. It doesn't mean it's the best anime. It doesn't. It's purely analytics and numbers. But those are data points that suggest that a lot of people love it. Just because something is popular, does that mean it's the best? No. But goddamn, it's definitely more evidence to claim that it could be compared to other animes that don't even get the numbers, right? And it is such a joy every Wednesday having a roasted episode that you know is going to be fucking lit. And you know what? Yuki, she removed her limiters yet again. And it's just... <laughs> It's just so fucking peak, and I think that this is my tier list for this, sorry, the last week of episodes, man. I think that these are all very, very good. Maybe Nokotan should go down, but I want to show Nokotan some love, man. I want to show Nokotan some love. This is fine. This is fine, and I think that these animes were definitely cut across. I, I think that, like, um, these animes were definitely better than these. I just thought, I don't know, man, and, like, these... These are ready to be dropped, bro. Like, all three of these, like, we'll see about Failure Frame, but that's pretty much it for this or the last weeks of most recent episodes of how I feel about the episodes. And if you think that I have a bad take, if you're mad and you feel you're seething right now, just think about why you feel mad about a random stranger's opinion about an anime. It means that you think that I'm your daddy. Go away. I'm not coming home.